Welcome back to Doom Builder. Today I want to expand our hub room in a way that I can I can show you how to use some blocking line defs along with middle textures to create sort of a fence or a, a grate or gate, whatever you want to call that. I think the technical term for that is masked middle texture, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Anyway, let's get started. What I'm thinking is we're gonna walk in this room and we're gonna turn to the right and up here on the upper part of this wall, there's going to be like a brown fence texture with some monsters and stuff behind it. We won't do monsters yet in this level, but we'll, we'll lay this out. I'm gonna go back to overhead map mode and I'm just gonna sort of freehand draw something up here. Kinda circular, but not really. Follow these vertices to get this closed off. And there we go. So now when we look, here's this room. Bring this up to a height of, I don't know yet. We'll just do 64 and see what looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and set this so we don't have a missing texture. But the next thing I wanna do is set middle textures. So I'm gonna select all the line defs on this ledge. Right click, we're gonna look at the middles. And we're going to use this brown small center. I'm going to set that. Actually, I'll just set it on one side. See, right now you can see it's on the front side, but not on the back. All the back is clear. So here on the front side, you can tell this is the front because if I look at the map view, you can see the little hash marks on the line depths are pointed inward. So the front is this side, the back is this side. If you're on the front, you can see this fence. If you're on the back, there is actually nothing there. And you can see there's going to be some odd spots where you can see the front side of the next segment. So just so you're aware, that's a thing. You might use that for effect, such as one-sided walls. If you think of like E1M1, the little secret that overlooks the, the bridge in the slime, that's how this is done. Anyway, I want back textures set. Select all these. I'm just going to copy and paste this here. And then I'm also going to make it impassable so that you can't walk through. Now we got this on both sides. I'm gonna drag the floor up a little bit and then bring the ceiling down a little bit just so that actually lines up and fills the space like so. These textures. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my divider textures here. This is a little tricky. I wanna set this on the slant and not change it too much. So what you'll see is I'm zooming way in, creating a point and trying to get the line segment to be length of 24. And I'm trying to keep the vertex I'm placing on the existing line. You know, I'm not doing this. I'm making sure it's over here. And once you're in game, I mean, it's not perfectly straight with the line next to it, but when you're in game, you're not really gonna do this. That's such a minor detail that you don't have to worry about it. Port three. Make sure the offset's zero. And here's our standard divider textures for this area. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just launch the game and we'll take a quick look at this. Here, head up the stairs and enter our hub room. So you can imagine putting a bunch of chain gunners or something like that up there. And you're gonna walk in here and you're gonna start getting gunned down. I'm going to ID clip up here real quick and that back off and you'll see that I cannot pass through here. So that is our impassable flag and the fact that this is on an angle also means Doom is losing its mind on collision code. You play with something like GZ Doom, um, it does, GZ Doom completely rewrites Doom's movement in collision code and that won't happen. But your more conservative ports, uh, Crispy Doom, Chocolate Doom. Even DSDA, DSDA Doom. You're going to have trouble sliding along this, so just be aware of that. You, you don't want to force players to have to slide along these weird angled walls. But this room should be fine because there is plenty of space here. Plenty of space to move around and not have to, not have to slide against that. Now, just keeping with the theme of this area, um, this needs some lights. I don't know if I want to expose this to the sky here or just do more light panels. And I think we'll just do light panels in the ceilings. I'm gonna decrease this brightness to 128. 
I'm gonna do a quick auto align on this because that was bugging me. That was a little better. Yeah, it was all match. Technically, there is a different. Here, I'll show you this real quick. There's end versions of this texture, so this is the center. But if I pull up the the texture viewer, you also see there's a left and a right where you're not cutting off the slot. That's really tough to use in a case like this because your wall length needs to be a multiple of 32 if you want to get that to actually line up and look well. And this being on sort of this rounded wall, there's no way it's a multiple of 32 and that's going to take way too much time to actually make that. So I'm going to ignore that and we'll just have to live with, if you look here, you can see how that slot is cut off on the wall. Same thing over here. So that's just a limitation of the area that we decided to draw here. Not much we can do about it. Anyway, standard lighting, I'm going to follow the 64 by 64 grid. Do something like this. Drag that up a notch. Set the ceiling to flat 22. And I forget what I used in the other. Come back here, okay. Well, actually these are different lights. They're different lights. I used Sean 2 and T Light 6.5. So I'm going to copy that, head back up here, do that, set all these to Sean 2. That other light would have looked fine here, but I'm going for a visual consistency here. I just want you know the level to be consistent as you're moving through it and not have any massively radical differences in appearance or in textures. Change the brightness to 192. Now this area is kind of lit up. I'm gonna draw a line like over here. Let me increase this brightness to 144. So that just gives you this appearance of, you know, it's really bright directly under the light and then it kind of fades off into the distance. Simple. Main topic of this video was just showing you how to use a masked middle texture like this. Um, the fact that it's masked means it has transparent areas so you can see through it. And setting that on a line, making sure it all lines up, and making it impassable so that you can have a little fence that you, you and monsters are not able to pass through. So that's it for now. Stay tuned for the next video.